Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan, and today I want to do a tier list of MPB managers in 2023. So, you know, MPB managing is definitely not where MLB is at in terms of the sabermetric revolution, where it's kind of become the norm for front offices and managers to, you know, work in tandem with analytics. Baseball in Japan is much more old school, much more textbook with all the small ball and you know, pitchers getting longer leashes. Some people like that about MPB, others don't. I'm much more of the latter category, like bunting is a dead art form in MLB, but, you know, I do get a little tired of seeing it all the time in MPB, especially when it's a good hitter being told to lay one down. Um, so you have to understand this tier list is, it is relative, meaning I don't actually think any MPB manager is like new age enough to where I would classify them as masterminds but there's obviously guys that are much better than others when it comes to say lineup construction in-game strategy controlling the clubhouse uh and everything else in between you know uh most mpb managers are also very heavily involved in the gm duties of the franchise so um they have a lot to do with the trades and signings and draft picks as well but uh let's get started here with the easiest choice of all i'm going to make his own tier Tatsunami, Kazuyoshi Tatsunami of the Chunichi Dragons, he goes right into the bottom, um, the worst manager in MPB by a large margin in my opinion, he is the Tony La Russa of Japan, probably even worse, um, just a cranky old man that criticizes his players even when they do well, we saw that last month when he whined about Seiya Hosokawa's approach at the plate after he hit a home run, um, he also temporarily exiled catcher Takia Kinoshita to the farm last year because he didn't like his pitch calling. Uh, he brutally cut longtime captain Rosuke uh, Hirata by telling him he should just retire. You know, yes, Hirata's best days were long behind him, but there are nicer ways to go about cutting a guy that's done so much for your franchise. And his in-game decisions are just unfathomable at times. You know, opening day starter this year, he leaves in Shinosuke Ogasawara for almost 150 pitches. His, re his reasoning for that was that, oh, I wanted to get him a winning decision, even though the team was already in the lead and he had already gone more than five innings, obviously. So just logic that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, risking major injury for a star player like that. He also plays Yohei Oshima in center field a lot over Yuki Okabayashi. Oshima's almost 40, he doesn't have range anymore. Okabayashi is a speedy 20-year-old that ranked number one in MPB in Ultimate Zone rating last year. So for Tatsunami, it's just a combination of terrible decision-making, uh, the team is obviously terrible, and, you know, he has a lot of self-righteousness, I would say, because he himself is a legendary player, so he thinks he can do no wrong in the managerial realm. Um, and I can't wait for someone else to take over. Tatsunami in it is in his own world at the bottom of this tier list. Uh, all right, now that we've done the worst, uh, we, we have to do the best so that we have, you know, a kind of a good range of, of who's good and who's bad. So uh, that's going to be Satoshi Nakajima of the Oryx Buffaloes. He has really turned this franchise around from what was a perennial punching bag and laughing stock a team that was basically the embodiment of like the LOL Mets meme, to a team that not only is a contender for the Japan Series every year now, but is actually in a position to win three straight PL pennants now. Uh, obviously, it's not just him, the entire staff, especially pitching coach uh, Atsuzawa has been instrumental in turning this franchise around, but Nakajima is a great players manager. The players have nothing but great things to say about him. He has a calm and collected presence, but he has funny moments at times to keep things loose in the clubhouse. Uh, he gets the most out of his players. And most importantly, I think Nakajima manages the pitching staff better than anyone in MPB, you know. He makes very astute bullpen decisions. He has a much, much quicker hook than most managers. Uh, we really saw that on full display in the Japan Series last year, where he was very proactive and, and completely outmanaged Shingo Takatsu, I think, when it comes to bullpenning. So... Nakajima, very smart man, bunts too much for my liking, but that's okay, he is still the best. Uh, now speaking of uh, Shingo Takatsu, he is going to go one tier below uh, Nakajima in, in A. Obviously, you know, he's, he's also worked some magic with the Swallows, taking them to the Japan Series in back-to-back -back years after they were bottom dwellers for such a long time. 
He put in his work as a coach throughout the 2010s, uh, and now this is his third year at the helm, just like Nakajima. And, you know, I, I generally like Takatsu's style. Uh, he seems to be a player's manager as well. He has a lot of trust in his guys. He's been very patient with the likes of Murakami amid all the struggles. And I think his lineup construction is some of the best in the league. You know, he always keeps Murakami in the cleanup, cleanup spot, but he's willing to play around with everyone else, moving Tetsuro Yamada into the leadoff spot sometimes, typically as, you know, a lefty like Aoki or Yamasaki in the two-hole, um, but has had like Patrick Kivlahan or Domingo Santana in the two-hole at times before. He likes to swap Jose Osuna and Santana around based on uh, who's doing be better, Kind of has, you know, Yuhei Nakamura as a glue player sandwiched in between. Um, so I, I have no qualms about the lineup construction. I think he's very good at it. And I also think his pitching management is fairly good. I mean, he took them to the Japan Series two straight years with a very shallow staff. Uh, so he did his best with a bad hand. Um, and coming into this year, I probably would have put him in that S tier uh, along with Nakajima. But he hasn't really been able to right the sinking ship this season. Not all his fault, of course, but, you know, they have no pitching and Murakami's underperforming and Shiomi is hurt. Uh, and, but, you know, I, I think Takatsu needed to show more desperation when they had that terrible 13-14 game losing streak. Uh, he finally started making some dramatic changes after like 9 or 10 losses, but initially he was just kind of rolling out the same uh, group every day, hoping he'd get better results. So uh, Takatsu, he's a guy that's played in MLB before. He has a good understanding of the game. I just don't think he's quite on Nakajima's level right now. Uh, all right, next up will be Hiroshi Fujimoto. Obviously, he's had uh, very big shoes to fill with the departure of Kimiyasu Kudo, who was the four-time manager of the year and five-time Japan Series champion. Um, and, and also, he's going to be the next manager of Samurai Japan, it seems. Um, and Fujimoto was a coach and manager down on the Hawks farm for like a decade. Uh, before being named Kudo's heir in 2022. So I, I thought he was a pretty good pickup since he knows all the players very well, watching them, watching them develop throughout the years. But I've honestly not been impressed with him at all. Uh, yes, they only narrowly lost the pennant on the last day of the season last year. Yes, the Hawks are uh, in, you know, close to first place this year as well. But the Hawks payroll, you know, is like twice as much as the average MPB team. And that dictates them having higher expectations you know this is supposed to be a true super team and that's why uh Fujimoto for me is going to go in the C tier you know um he, he's getting good but not great results and that's you know with this team an underachievement uh it's easy it's not easy managing a team like the Hawks because there aren't enough spot starting jobs to go around for all the great players that they have but even so you know some of his decisions are just baffling to me uh he doesn't have enough faith in the younger players he's not willing to give Guys like Riku Watanabe or Kenta uh, Tanagiwara a shot as the primary catcher over Takia Kai, even though their hitting is far better. Uh, he gives way too much playing time to guys like Hikaru Kawase that have no offensive upside at all. His bullpen choices are, you know, often pretty questionable. And so I'm just not sold on Fujimoto as a manager. He's a funny guy. I like the I like the vibes he gives off. So I, I want to like him, but um he's he's c tier for me you know it's japan series or bust for this team and so far uh well it was only one year but he didn't deliver last year let's see what he does this year joining fujimoto in the c tier will be tatsunori hara of the yomiuri giants uh honestly he could be in the d tier but i'll give him the benefit of the doubt because uh he did win the wbc back in 2009 and a japan series title in 2012 uh, that was his second stint as the Giants skipper. Now this is his third. Um, so he does have experience with winning, but like Fujimoto, his teams always have huge expectations. And so he should be doing a lot more. I generally like his lineup construction, and I think he's cut down on bunting a little bit more over the years. So he is adapting a bit. Um, but to me, a team like, like the Giants, with all the power they have up and down the lineup, should never bunt. You know, they should always just try to hit the ball over the fence and he is a proactive manager when it comes to the bullpen decisions but he comes across as being too much of uh like a micromanager you know just kind of obsessed with the righty lefty matchups even if the splits don't really reflect what he's trying to do 
uh, and he also just relies too heavily on his aces to carry the load. Tomiyuki Sugano was worked worked to death uh, throughout the 2010s. That's why he's injured a lot more these days. And he's starting to do the same with Shosei Togo, which is very concerning to me when you're asking a young ace like him to go 100, 110 plus pitches every time out. So, you know, I, I think Har is not the worst. You can win with him, but I also think someone else could do a much better job with the roster he's got. Uh, Shinosuke Abe would be an interesting uh, heir to him maybe in the next couple of years. Okay, how about uh, Kazuhisa Ishii? Uh, another former big leaguer, a guy who had a very successful career between MPB and MLB, and a guy who was known to be pretty funny back in the day, gave some uh, really funny interviews. But these days, you look in the dugout and he seems pretty miserable, understandably so, because Rakuten um, aren't very good. You know, they've had a top three or four payroll in MPB for a number of years now. And what has Ishii done with that? Absolutely nothing. He started out as the as just the D GM of this team back in 2018, um, but he's been the GM manager since 2021. And so obviously, you know, other people do help him out, but he's basically responsible for everything that goes on in this team in terms of trades, draft picks, uh, and the, and the day to day stuff. So this is his project, and they looked awfully good on paper in 2021 with Tanaka coming home. Uh, and that stacked kind of rotation that they had, but they were only a three seed and they got quickly bounced in the first round. And then in 2022, they seemed, uh, they, they had a fantastic start to the year. So everything seemed to be going right. And somehow it all crashed and burned. Uh, that's also carried over into 2023. Their season is a disaster. So Ishii's going to go in the D tier for me. I think the Eagles should definitely consider firing him mid season. Um, although, what's the point at this point? They're way out of the playoff picture. Um, you know, shortcomings are not totally his fault. You know, I thought the Abe trade this offseason was actually a good one. He just hasn't panned out. Uh, and I think the Eagles are fairly fundamentally sound. I think their batting approach um, is, is very good. How much of that is Yoshi? I'm not sure. Uh, but they take a lot of walks. So, some good things. Um, but... Eagles haven't developed much talent in talent in recent years, and when you underperform expectations this much with a huge payroll, uh, he has to go into the D tier for me. Joining him in the D tier will be Akinobu Okada of the Hanshin Tigers, uh, legend of the game. So you know, pretty common theme with a lot of MPB managers; they're often fantastic players, um, but that leads to some flawed thinking when they become a manager. Uh, and, and this is Okada's third stint as captain. Uh, he led Hanshin in the mid-2000s, did get a pennant out of them, but it's not like he was doing anything special. Uh, I, I guess he deserves credit for being somewhat ahead of the curve when it came to bullpen management. He had JFK there uh, in the back end closing games, turned Fuji, uh, Fujikawa from a very mediocre starter into an elite reliever. But he also had some questionable decisions like, like moving Andy Sheets off of shortstop and moving him to first base. He was always kind of a cranky guy, argued with umpires a lot. Um, and then he went on to manage uh, the other Kansai team in the early 2010s, but had no success there. Um, so, you know, this is basically another do-over for him. Two, almost two decades after his initial success with the Tigers, he's a very old man now. I don't see him as a great strategizer. Uh, you know, I, I see him as someone that's very set in his own ways, like when he decided immediately that Teruaki Sato would permanently move to third base and that Takumu Nakano would permanently move to uh, second base before spring training even started. Um, it's kind of worked out in a weird way, but I just don't like the logic behind that of deciding uh, to, to move a guy's position before he even, you know, before you even watch him on the field. Um, you know, Yano had a much more... He was, he was much more open to versatility. Um, and, and I don't know, you know, he, he's just tough to get a gauge on sometimes because he has helped the Tigers improve their hitting approach quite a bit, taking way more pitches than during the Yano years. Uh, he's made sure the table setters take their walks and get on base by any means necessary. So I like that. He's drilled that into their heads. But his patience level with certain players just doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, he stuck with Sheldon Noisy for like two months in the three hole to start the season, despite the results being very bad. I have no idea why he stuck with him for that long. Uh, not to mention left field is not his primary position, so it's not like he was providing anything defensively. Uh, but then he sent 
Hiroaki Sato down to the farm last week because he was kind of in a slump, even though he was hitting the ball hard uh, and was making gradual improvements. And, you know, Sato, even at his worst, is like the second most dangerous hitter on the Tigers after Oyama. So he's not like Tatsunami levels of inept. Uh, he's done some smart things, but overall just too old school for me. A lot of the, a lot of the decisions don't really make sense. Let's see if he can kind of hold on to first place and get them a pennant this year. Uh, if he obviously breaks the curse and, and wins a championship, then it's worth uh, re-evaluation. But for now, he has to be D-tier. Okay, uh, Daisuke Miura, Bancho, uh, started out as the pitching coach of this team, and this is now his third year as manager. Again, club legend. Uh, he was teammates with some of the current players uh, in the recent past. Uh, which is always a bit tricky, but he seems like a good players manager that has the respect of the clubhouse. And, you know, considering that he was a great pitcher himself and that he was the former pitching coach, I think he deserves uh, at least some of the credit for the Bay Stars turning their pitching around. Their arms are just generally much better than they used to be uh, before he took over. Uh, and so Mura, for me, is going to go in the B tier. Um, I, I really liked his predecessor, Alex Ramirez. I was disappointed to see him step down because I thought he was, you know, one of the few guys going against a lot of the old traditionalist con conventions in MPB. Uh, Mira is definitely, you know, not quite Ramirez level, um, but I think he makes the team better. I'm not sure, you know, why he used Fujita to pinch it uh, with the game on the line in the playoffs last year. That might have cost them the series and their season, but in general, I think he puts his players in a good position to succeed. And since he doesn't do too many blatantly st stupid things, that alone uh, is enough to put him in the B tier. Uh, Alright, four guys left. Let's go with Shinjo. Shinjo, Shinjo, Shinjo. Shinjo is controversial in a way because he just sort of he just sort of swooped in and took over for Hideki Kuriyama uh, last year. Called himself Big Boss, you know. So, really loud personality. He did uh, walk back on that a little bit. He no longer uses that moniker, but... He loves the spotlight. That much is pretty obvious. He has a big ego and a big personality that turns some people off. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I personally like Shinjo's, you know, whole shtick a lot. Uh, I think he's exactly what a, what a young team like the Fighters need. A guy that's going to be unorthodox, change the lineup every day, give everyone playing time. Uh, and he can take the media off of his players, you know, backs if they struggle uh, because he can put the spotlight right back on himself. Now, I wish he was a bit more kind of, you know, smart when it came to the strategy. Uh, like, he does think outside of the box, but it's usually in, like, weird ways. Like, oh, let's double steal all the time and then call, like, two suicide squeezes in the same game and play our best defensive outfielder at first base, you know. It, it can get pretty wacky and silly at times with him. Um, but it also makes the fighters a bit unpredictable. And I think opposing teams should always be uncomfortable when facing them because you just never know what Shinjo is going to throw at you. Obviously, I, I like that he's committed to, um, you know, raising Kota Yazawa as a two-way player. His in-game management, like I said, could use could use work, but I think he is a great ambassador for the game. Uh, I'm going to put him in the B tier. You know, um, he, he's getting a lot out of out of the youngsters, developing them, Manami and Kiyomiya and Nomura. Uh, in particular, and he, he's basically already said that his goal is to make the fighters competitive again, uh, and then his intention is to move on to like a different project. So I like him personally. He goes into the B tier. I'm not sure he's a guy that you would want once you, you know, once the fighters are a team that are going to be competing for the Japan series. But in terms of where the fighters are right now, I think he's perfect. Uh, and then we get to these last three. These guys are all rookie managers. Uh, starting this season, Yoshi for the Marines, uh, Kaz for the uh, Lions, and then Arai for the Carp. Honestly, I don't think we can fairly assess them quite yet on just half a season, but based solely on performance uh, so far, um, I think, you know, Yoshi and Arai are, are B tier. Um, I, I'll actually put Yoshi in A tier, because uh, I really like what we're seeing from him. Uh, and, you know, Kaz, Kaz Mitsui's Lions are, are just a really bad team on paper, so he doesn't have much to work with. I guess he'll go into C tier, just so I can kind of keep this list uh, even. He could very much be B tier, though. He, he does have a uh, lot of potential. And, you know, he has MLB experience, so he can help the youngsters in a number of ways. 
especially things like base running and defense. Um, but, you know, right now, I can't put him any higher than C tier because the team just isn't good. Um, with Yoshi, though, Masato Yoshi, he was the pitching coach for Samurai Japan, uh, so he barely got to see his guys before the season, but he is competing for a pennant with a very mediocre roster on paper, so he has to be doing something right. Uh, the Marines do all the little things well. They're an example of, uh, you know, a team that actually does small ball well. They, they're a very fundamentally sound team. And he's also much more willing to play kind of like high leverage situations with the bullpenning rather than just having set roles, uh, which compared to a lot of, uh, you know, other MPB managers that's, that say, oh, our best reliever is always going to pitch that final inning no matter what. That's like Tatsunami style, right? Like Rydal Martinez, you're only going to see him in the ninth inning or the 12th inning. Um, but yeah, so for Yoshi, that, that shows advanced thinking. Um, and then with uh, Takahiro Arai for the carp, um, they're also punching above their weight a lot. You know, um, you know, much like Daisuke Miura, he's played with quite a few of his teammates, won an MVP in 2016. I don't think he deserved it. Should have gone to say a Suzuki, but that's beside, besides the point. Um, so he is very fresh off his own playing career, which can make clubhouse relationships difficult. I suppose you could compare him to a guy like uh, David Ross in Chicago. Yeah, but so far, Arai is kind of inspiring a very scrappy style of baseball for the Carp as I see it. They're much better on the field than on paper. And to be quite honest, um, you know, pretty much anyone is better than Shinji Sasaoka, the former manager of this team. Seemed to be a nice dude, but uh, he was one of the most forgettable managers ever. So uh, Arai and Yoshi are both doing a very good job so far. Um, and if their teams keep, you know, overperforming, then they're definitely going to uh, come to be known as as some of the best managers in MPB. But yeah, uh, this is going to be the tier list for now. In the S tier, we've got Satoshi Nakajima, the reigning Japan Series champion. A tier, Shingo Takatsu of the Swallows and Masato Yoshi of the Marines. B tier is Miura of the Bay Stars, Shinjo of the Fighters, and Arai of the Carp. C tier, Fujimoto for the Hawks, uh, Hara for the Giants, and, and Matsui for the Lions. D tier, Ishii for the for the Eagles and Okada for the Tigers. And then in his own tier, uh, tucked in there at the bottom is Kazuyoshi Tatsunami. He's going to be gatekeeping the Tatsunami tier. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.